Hello everyone, my name is Not Important, Important or Nimpy, and welcome to the Nimportant Halloween Special. Yes, we're taking a second short break from the Execrables to bring you something rather SPOOKY! So, whether you're a vampire, or a werewolf, or a ghost, or a ghoul... Okay, pause that. What's a ghoul? What's the difference between a ghost and a ghoul? Oh, okay, so I guess a, a ghoul is living and evil, and a ghost is dead but can be good or evil, but I guess that depends on the person. If I was a ghost, I'd most certainly be evil, or at least cruel. A poltergeist, that's what I'd be. Why, it's Potty Wee Potter! Peeves was the best Harry Potter character, no doubt about it. Now, you see, I have fond memories of playing this game as a kid. The Harry Potter books and films never really grasped my attention until my cousin and me spent hours collecting Bertie Bot's beans and mimicking the amazing voice acting. Are you okay, uh, Harry? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, that, that is a matter of opinion. Come on, follow me. But that's aside the point. Tonight, good people, in the spirit of Halloween, I am going to tell you a story that will haunt you until your time on this earth runs out. I tell you, no lies. The hour is upon us. It is time to begin. The night is dark, the moon a shade of pale blue, you are alone. There is no noise, save the whistling wind curling itself around the branches of the willow tree outside. The lighting inside is soft, a sort of deep orange glow, flickering. Though the scene inside is pleasant enough, you are uneasy. You have something on your mind, something you must do. The first few drops of rain, foreshadowing the oncoming downpour, begin to spatter against the glass panes of your window, decreasing their internal temperatures and increasing the rate at which clouds of condensation form on the inside. The cold creeps steadily towards your hand, still pressed against the glass. You remove it, and the ghostly handprint you leave behind is slowly consumed by the cloud of cold water droplets, now obscuring the view of the courtyard. Staring through the middle of the window, the few clear panes that hadn't yet succumbed to the cold, you find yourself running your eyes across the familiar grey paving slabs that line the courtyard, and then over the outlines of the ancient, grotesque statues dotted across it in no particular pattern. Suddenly you begin rubbing your hand against the window to remove the condensation. In a flash of madness you wonder if the things you can't see are any more interesting than the things that you can. You soon realise that they aren't. Bored with the miserable view, you turn away from the window and back to the room. You can't spend all day staring at a slowly darkening castle courtyard. You have things to do. One thing in particular. You shiver at the thought of it and tell yourself to think of something else, but your brain defies its master. You're going to have to do it. You grab your cloak and head off towards the library. The heavy door opens with a loud creak. You scurry in from the rain with your cloak over your head, and all at once, steal into the shade. You can't afford to be caught by her, or got, by him. She was small, quick, with the eyes of an animal who's been kept in subservience for far too long. Angry eyes, eyes that glow, eyes that stare. Her finding you would be bad, but her letting her master know that she found you, that would be far, far worse. He was here. You spy the light of his lantern flickering down the hall. He's going the other way. You eye the wheeled stepladder next to the bookshelves and decide that height is your ally. At least he wouldn't find you up here. Clambering on top of the next bookcase, you hide in the shadows. You silently curse your heavy shoes as you crawl along the wooden top shelf. There. There. Do you see them? Eyes, glowing bright yellow, they look towards you. She has not fixated on your position, yet. 
edge along. That's it. That's it. Looking back, you can see that the eyes have left you alone for now. There's only a matter of time before they come out of the dark again and fix you with their golden gaze. One false move and it'll be game over. Oh. There's a vase in the way. A large, pale pink vase, ovular in shape and probably of extraordinary value. You can't risk knocking it down to the floor of the library. The noise would destroy you and all your chances of... Best not to think about it. Moving it would be dangerous too. Your breath is shallow and quivery. Your legs feel weak. You eye the bookcase to your right and size up the four foot gap between it and the one you are currently lying on top of. You're going to have to jump. It's okay. Compose yourself. You've got to. If you mess this up, he'll be coming for you. He's always coming for you. You stare down at the shaded floor and see a flurry of movement in the shadows. She's close to finding you. It's now or never. One, two, three. Over your shoulder you hear the padding of her paws as she closes in on your position. He is nowhere to be seen. He must have crossed into the next room. You must do the same. Standing upright, you tiptoe your way along the bookshelf. It wobbles. It's going to fall if you keep this up, but you need your speed to jump to the next one. Get moving, there's an ancient alcove carved into the wall above that bookcase. It'll make a good hiding spot. Quickly now, come on, gather your pace and... Quickly, she's on to you. Run, run, run. Yes, quickly, scale it. She'll follow you if you don't. Is that his voice? You catch your breath atop the bookcase you've just scaled. Settled into the alcove, you hear the dragging of feet across the floor. Large feet. An amber glow draws near to you. Can he sense you? Rolling yourself up into a ball, you bury your head in your hands. This could be it. And you sure as hell don't want to see what comes next. Heavy breathing approaches, and the light from his lantern catches the top of the bookcase. You feel a tear roll away from your eyes and onto your hands. A bead of snot coils itself inside your nostril, yet you cannot sniff it away. He's near. He's so near. This is it. You're going to... He's moving away. She's moving with him. You draw your hands back from your eyes in disbelief and watch his ambling figure disappear into the dark. Wait. He's left his lantern on that shelf over there. That's it, there'll be no warning light now. No way of tracking his movements, no way to know where he is. He fancies his chances in the dark. So do you. Out of the alcove, onto the shelf, pause, listen. No breeze. The windows are shut. He's keeping you here. The inside bolt is down. He's locked you in. Alone. In the library. You're a mouse in an elaborate trap and he will get you. She may find you, but he will get you. No time to lose. The next bookshelf lends itself nicely to you. It runs along the side of the room towards the door. Run, drop, hide, listen. Within moments you've made it to the next room. You congratulate yourself warmly for making it this far, but you can't pause even for a second. You hear soft padding behind you again. It's her. Get moving. There she is, the eyes, they're in the room. They're not focused on you yet, but one false move and they will be. There's a lump in your throat and you mean to swallow, but you can't. Not now. He's joined her. You watch as his pale, ashen hands reach for the bolt on the door. The trap just got a whole lot smaller. The musty smell of the long undisturbed books hangs in the air and a thick, flawless layer of dust lies ahead. You hope that it doesn't trigger you to sneeze, and that would be the end for sure. Shuffle. Shuffle. You can't see him anymore. Or her. They're both in here somewhere. Next bookshelf. Shuffle. Shuffle. She's below you. You see the sliver of moonlight entering through the large window behind you reflect off the silky fur on her back. Your hand comes across a loose piece of stone in the wall. Yes. Brilliant. All we need to do is throw it way over there and then make a dash for it. There's no other way you'll be able to move while she's there. Your fingers grip the stone tightly and you wrench it free of its resting place. 
tilting your arm back. You throw it. Her eyes light up and follow the noise. No. No, now they're focused directly on you. She lets out a shriek and the footsteps approach. Quick, run! There's no time to- We are in trouble now, aren't we? Filch and makes a fool of him.